I just bought the book Bushcraft by Morris Kahansky, and I decided that instead of just putting it on the shelf, I would read it and try to practice the skills inside. In order to motivate myself to do so, I'm starting a little outdoors book club on my channel. The purpose of these videos is to share information, uh, practice. I'm hoping to learn a lot in the process and hopefully you will too. One other thing, I'm not an expert. If I was an expert, I wouldn't need to buy a book. You'll get to see what an average guy from Iowa does trying to practice these skills. You don't have to be a superman to go outside. Welcome to episode 12. In this episode, I'm going to talk about how to choose an axe for bushcraft. In general, um, Moore says that the larger the axe, the safer it is to use and the left, less effort it requires to use it. If you are choosing an axe, basically what you want to do is you want to pick some sort of a balance between the size of the axe and the work you want to do with it and its portability. Thankfully, you've got a lot of choices when it comes to axes. There are micro hatchets, regular hatchets, small axes, medium axes. There are even large felling axes. Who is it? There are double bit axes, splitting axes, and splitting mauls. When you're choosing an axe, one thing you're going to have to look at is the convex blade that it comes with. And you're going to want to choose a thickness or a strength of the convexity based on the tasks that you are going to be using the axe for. What is convexity? Well, instead of having the blade uh, come to a nice sharp point like a kitchen knife, because kitchen knives are great for things like slicing and things like that, but they're not so great at chopping through a log. So instead of shaping, shaping it like this, they shape it with a little bit of convexity. And that convexity adds strength to the edge, and you can still sharpen it to a razor sharpness. If the convex is too shallow on your blade, it has the potential of binding up when you're chopping. If it's too thick, it won't penetrate well enough and you will waste a lot of energy. So you need to find the right balance for you. And you can grind your blade to, to work um, and do the kind of work that you want it to do. The good thing is, you can have more than one axe. You don't just have to have one axe. Not that I would advocate hiking a bunch of axes in with you, but when you are looking at axes and for use around home or your cabin or whatever, remember that it's okay to have more than one axe. For general bushwork, he says that a good axe goes from the uh, palm of your hand to your armpit. When you're choosing your axe, make sure that the center of the blade lines up with the handle. Make sure that the grain of the handle is straight and that it's good hickory wood and make sure it feels good for you to use. There's an old saying, getting the hang of it, and I just learned that that's because when you are handling an axe, that's another name for that is hanging an axe. And if you just can't uh, get used to swinging a particular kind of axe, you just don't like the hang of it. Now what did I choose? Well, I'm going to be honest with you, I grew up in the woods and there were constantly down trees, down tree limbs that I'd have to deal with. Uh, we had uh, firewood that had to be split and gathered for the winter and occasionally I would have to fell a tree because it was just in the wrong spot or it was dying or things like that. And honestly, I used a chainsaw and if a hydraulic splitter was available, I used that to split the wood. Occasionally I would use an axe for those tasks, but I wasn't looking to live through some Renaissance Fair style turkey leg eating Jeremiah Johnson reenacting bullshit. I just wanted to get the work done and those were the best tools for the job. Another thing I also grew up doing was going into the wilderness and going on long extended backpacking trips and things like that. And for those, basically the only things I ever brought along were a Swiss Army knife and a folding, uh, it's called a Sven saw, but it's basically a folding bow saw. I never once packed an axe in anywhere. I have just found a folding bow saw to be more useful. And I didn't really rely on chopping stuff because most of the fires I make 
are made with um, wrist sized pieces of wood and smaller and most of the time you can just break those with your feet and that's how I always did it if if it wasn't possible then I'd use the bow saw now I've been in uh, a lot of wilderness lately that requires a big chopping implement and for that I made a parang and I have found that to be a fantastic chopping implement I do own a lot of axes and I use them and for the purposes of this book I've been using a lot more of axes than I usually use. The one that I have settled on is this uh, Grand Force Brooks uh, Hunter's Axe and it's a lot like the small forest axe. I don't own a small forest axe but I understand they're very very similar. The difference being that the pole of the Hunter's Axe is, is burnished or polished so that you can use it for skinning and uh, things like that when you kill your large animal. And I hunt so I thought this would be a good choice. And I found that this particular length of uh, handle and just the way this axe works, works um, very, very well for me for the stuff that I've been filming for this project. I do own the um, Scandinavian Forest Axe and uh, I like this axe um, but the handle isn't long enough to be um, useful for large tasks and it isn't short enough for me to be usable for real fine tasks like splitting um, pieces of small wood into real fine kindling and so of these two um, I like the Scandinavian forest axe but I like the uh, hunter's axe better and for if, if you're not a hunter and you're never gonna use the capabilities of this polished handle don't buy the hunter's axe by the small forest axe and I'm sorry we didn't do any chopping today but in the next episode I promise we're cutting down a tree